Welcome everybody. I'm Kristen Kinchin and this is our um, live, but if you're watching in replay, it's replay, um, live cooking demonstration that I call Cooking with Kristen. And um, I am in my kitchen using Pamper Chef tools. So I'm excited for you guys to learn a new recipe tonight. We are making a caramelized onion and tomato pizza. Um, the recipe has already been posted in the party, but I can send it to you if you would like. And um, everything I'll be cooking with will be Pampered Chef tools so that you can actually see them in action and how they really do work and how they are so wonderful. And um, if you have any questions as we go along, certainly ask uh, those of you that are watching the replay. If you have comments or questions, just drop them you know, in the uh, comments of the post and I'll certainly be able to get back to you on that. So we're going to start with um, making our dough we're actually going to make some homemade pizza dough and we're going to be using the new stand mixer from pampered chef so this is brand new just came out um march 1st so you guys are some of the first people to see this in action so who already has a stand mixer kitchenaid cuisinart something like that in your kitchen and did it like change your world when you got a stand mixer i mean i know it did for me because i've had a, a kitchenaid for a couple of years Thanks so much. So, yeah, for any dough making, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we're going to be, so, so the kitchen, so this, I would say the KitchenAid, um, I had, like I said, I've had a KitchenAid for a couple of years because I never thought Pampered Chef was going to come out with a stand mixer because Pampered Chef's philosophy is if we can't make something better than or do more than <laughs> what's already on the market, we're not going to even go into that market. So I kind of had a feeling because I had a KitchenAid and it was like amazing and I loved it. I thought, well, I guess Pampered Chef doesn't feel like they can make it better than, so they're not even going to come out with a stand mixer. So I have been cooking with a KitchenAid for a couple of years, but let me tell you, uh, once this came out and I started using it, I'm like, Pampered Chef did it. They made it better than. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what what, how it works. Um, not to say that if you already have a great stand mixer, you need to throw that away and get the Pampered Chef one, but think about maybe if there's a kid that could use a stand mixer, you could donate yours to them and then you could get the better model with the Pampered Chef one. And if you don't have a kid, if you don't already have a stand mixer and it's something you've been thinking about, definitely think about the Pampered Chef one just because it is so amazing. So it comes with a couple of attachments. So it does have the paddle that um, like the KitchenAid does, has um, kind of a, a soft, like a silicone scraper. What I have found with this is that it really does hit all the way to the edge and it does a great job of incorporating everything. I never have any dry flour or powder or anything around the outside. So that scraper bar really is nice. Um, it does have a dough hook, which is what we're going to be using today for our um, for our dough, and and then it comes with a whisk. So kind of the same attachments that you get, and has those same functionality. I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and then I'll talk a little bit more because I, I don't want to hold us up waiting on the dough. So um, I'm making what's called five minute dough. I have not posted the recipe yet in the party, but I will go ahead and do that because this is my favorite pizza recipe because it does not involve yeast. So I'm kind of new to, not new to, but I, do, I don't do a lot of yeast bread, so I'm not that good at it um, in terms of the rising. And I'm so, always so bad about starting things in time because like, you know, it has to rise for two hours, then you have to knead it, let it rise again. So I never start things early enough to do yeast breads, but this dough is made with ingredients that I always have on hand. So if it's a last minute, like, oh, I want to make pizza, I always have the ingredients on hand. So I have a cup and a half of flour already added to my bowl. We are going to go ahead and um, do some baking powder. We're going to do a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. And using my little adjustable measuring spoons, if you guys are not familiar with these, these are great because you can just use the same spoon for several measurements. You just keep adjusting it to what you need. And we're going to go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, or I'm sorry, baking soda. I always get baking powder and baking soda mixed up. Do you guys? I always have to like, if I'm reading a recipe, I always look like 10 times making sure it's soda powder, soda powder, make sure I get the right thing. That's going to go in there. And then the magic ingredient <laughs> is yogurt, Greek yogurt. So it, there's something about how it activates with the other ingredients that gives you that rise on your bread. So that's why I said it's flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, and Greek yogurt. These are all ingredients that I always have on hand so I can always make this dough. 
And then that's your basic dough. But depending on what you're making, you can flavor up the dough a little bit if you'd like. And so I'm going to add some Italian seasoning to it because what the heck, why not? It's going to really complement what I'm making tonight. So with our seasonings, um, I don't know if you guys have tried them yet or not, but we have all the different countries. So like Italian and Asian and Southwest and things like that, but then all kinds of like herby things, garlic and um, garlic and onion and herb de Provence and different things like that. And barbecue seasonings, all kinds of, so however you want to flavor your food, we've got a seasoning for you. The cap is a tablespoon. So if you don't have a measuring spoon out or you don't want to get something dirty, you can just use the cap to measure out what you want. So I don't need quite a tablespoon, I'm going to do about a half a tablespoon. So I've done a half a cap full and we're going to add that to it. And then we're going to add our dough hook to this. Get it positioned right here. Where's my little <clears throat> You can see how new this is. I still have to fumble a little bit with it. There we go. And then the one thing that I do like about this compared to my KitchenAid is that it locks. Um, my KitchenAid, you know, the head lifts up, but it doesn't lock. And one time I made the mistake of having my thumb in there and the head fell down on my thumb and it was like really, really painful. But this locks. And then there's just a little release back here that, and then it locks into place. Then the other thing that really, really makes this special is that it has presets. So as I said, I'm not a bread maker. Um, you know, and again, when it comes to kneading, I'm not even sure really how long do I need to knead it or whatever. This has presets. So there is a, a preset for knead. And so when you push that button, it is set for time and speed of the motor and everything for the entire process. And it will knead with just a push of a button. And when the time is up, it stops. So if you get distracted or, you know, you leave the room or whatever, you don't have to worry about something over mixing because it's going to keep mixing and you're not there. The other thing is, is that you don't have to adjust it along. Like it knows it's to start slow as it's incorporating ingredients and then it goes faster and faster. So, um, so we're going to do need, um, the, the preset is for eight minutes. I'm actually going to lower that down to about six minutes. Cause I know with this dough, it's called a five minute dough, meaning once you mix the ingredients you need for about five minutes. So that's kind of where I'm going with my timing. So you can adjust the time, even though there are presets. And so I'm going to move this down to six minutes and then you just uh, push the button oops one thing I did want to add is um this is sold as an accessory but there is this little, little shield so if you're mixing something messy it would keep things within the bowl but I like this little pour spout so if you need to add ingredients as you go it makes it really easy to do that um I will most likely be adding flour to this as it goes along, just because I do know from when I made this by hand before I had the mixer, I would add quite a bit of flour to it as I was kneading. So since the machine's doing the kneading, I know I'm going to have to add a little bit more flour. So I like having this little pour spout here so that I can add the flour and it'll go right in. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and just start, push the button and it's going to start. I'm going to move the camera over just so you can hopefully get a little peek in there and see what's going on. And I'll kind of show you as we go along uh, what it's looking like, but I want to go ahead and move on to some other ingredients. But we'll have this running in the background and you're going to hear, like I said, it's going slow right now as it's incorporating ingredients, but it will gear up a little bit as it starts to need. So hopefully you can hear me over the noise of that. I'll try to stay close to the camera but it's gonna be hands off, which is what I like so that it can uh, continue to do what it needs to do while I continue to do what I need to do. So could we are making, so any questions yet on the stand mixer? Yeah. So could you show like the, the actual settings on the mixer? Oh yeah, thank you. I, I did mean to do that and I, I got distracted. So thank you. So I don't know that you can see them, but they're all right here and I'm just gonna talk you through them so that I can be closer to the screen. So there is um, mix, which is, oh, and let me show you one other thing. Let me grab it real quick. Hi, Queenie. All of our electric. So whether you buy the, um, whether you buy like the um, air fryer or the cooking uh, blender or any of those comes with a cooking guide. And this is the best way to get started with using um, these appliances because they talk you through everything. So it gives you some recipes to help you get started so that you can kind of figure out what each of the settings are. And it gives you ideas for the settings, like what does that setting mean? And you know, what should I be cooking with it? So 
it has mix as we were saying let me get where the, the light is right on me so it has a mix setting so that would be like if you're making cookies and you just kind of need to incorporate your ingredients you would just hit the mix setting um everything has a preset but as you saw you can adjust it or you can go with a whole total custom thing if you don't want to use presets you can do your own thing so it has mix it has whip so like if you're making whipped cream you literally push the button and it will incorporate everything, gear up, go faster, 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 makes the whipped cream, and then it stops. And you don't have to worry about it over whipping. Like if you're like, well, I don't know when to stop it. Um, it's, it just knows like the perfect setting and makes the perfect whipped cream without you having to, to babysit it. Um, it has a cream setting. That's one of the other settings that I absolutely love. I had just recently, or I say recently, like in the last, I don't know, five years, research what does it mean to cream like your your butter and your sugar or whatever when you make cookies because I never really knew what that meant so I just kind of mixed them I didn't really cream them then learning what cream was all about I I realized I wasn't doing I wasn't mixing enough so I started mixing at a higher speed and longer and I thought oh I'm creaming oh no once I saw what it looks like when this cream something it is like so smooth and creamy and absolutely delicious. So, um, so it's smarter than I am. Like it knows what to do. So does it stop once it thinks? Does it stop once it thinks yeah. it's cream? Or you yeah, like so it has a preset on time. It's not stopping because it it knows it's the right texture, but the time just seems to be perfect. So, okay. literally, it's like two minutes and fifty seconds. And when you push the preset, that's the time. And everything I've made with the cream setting is perfect this is absolutely perfect so and then it has a mix settings which i'd already mentioned and then it has a beat setting so mix is kind of a slower mixing incorporating and beat is faster like if you wanted to make like mashed potatoes throw your potatoes and milk and cream and butter and whatever and then it's a faster mix so that you get really really nice creamy mashed potatoes with it and and then the need setting of course so those are all the presets and your little guide talks you through like what are different things that you would use the different settings for plus recipes so it's really really takes the guesswork out of learning how to use the stand mixer okay i'm gonna see let you guys take a look hopefully you can kind of see in the spout there okay um how it has incorporated all of our ingredients and it is a little wet so i'm going to go ahead and add some flour turn this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And if you guys haven't seen this cute little scoopy thing from Pampered Chef, it's a little stainless steel scoop. It's got measure markings on it up to three, uh, up to three tablespoons. I just keep this in my flour and I keep one in my sugar and it's really nice just for like a quick scoop of whatever you need. So add about a three tablespoons or so to this. I'm going to see how that does. And basically, we just kind of want it, you know, again, like a traditional dough, we just kind of want it to be all smooth and rounded by the time it gets to the end. And so that's what it's doing. So good question. Any other question on the stand mixer? And I'll keep showing you what it's looking like. Okay, so we're making pizza. And if you know anything about Pampered Chef, you know we are known for our stoneware. So this is our pizza stone. And this is what I'm going to be baking pizza on. Um, does everybody have stoneware? Those of you that are on the call? Okay, and you guys love it, I'm sure. Have you guys been cooking on stoneware for like years and years and years? So for me, 35 years. Anybody been cooking on stoneware longer than 35 years? Okay, I got y'all beat. <laughs> so anyway, so stoneware, if you guys have stoneware from like years and years and years ago, you know you're not supposed to use soap on it. You can't put it in the dishwasher. But Pampered Chef has rectified that. So if you're in the market for a new piece of stoneware, you're going to notice the back looks a little bit different than yours. Yours is probably smooth, whereas this has the waves on it. Oh, I'm already at the end of my six minutes. Well, that went fast. I was talking a long time. Let me see if our, my dough looks like I want it to be. Yeah, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to let it knead for a few more minutes. If you guys can see that just, it's a little dry still. Oops, I got hung up on my cabinet. It's a little dry, so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Give it, I'm gonna give it that last two minutes that see, I should have listened to the mixer. It was preset for eight minutes, and I thought I knew more, and I don't. <laughs> so let me add just a little bit more flour. 
And we're gonna go ahead and do need. We're gonna do just two minutes. Add that last two minutes I should have done to begin with. If I can get the timer down there. Oops, it's only gonna to go to four. That's what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna, I'll turn it off early. So looking good, looking good. Okay, so stoneware, as I was telling you, if you purchase stoneware now today and you get these ridges on it, it is dishwasher safe. You can use soap on it. And the other thing that I like about it is that you can preheat it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my oven right now. So it can get nice and hot while I am, getting the rest of our pizza ready. And then I'm gonna make our pizza on my pizza wheel. And then I'm gonna kind of shoosh it into the oven. So hopefully it goes in there right without making a big old mess while you guys are watching me. So let's see where we are in our dough. Dough is looking good. I just don't wanna leave it. So I'm gonna see how it's incorporating all of that beautifully. It's coming together just like I want. I don't want to leave it at this point because I'm going to forget about it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. That was that extra two minutes that I should have done originally. And we're gonna go ahead and cancel that. Okay, now it's not so noisy. Sorry about all that extra noise. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead now and do some caramelized onions and tomatoes. So I'm gonna be cooking in our Brilliance cookware. This is a new line of cookware that we have. It's really, really pretty on the outside, non-stick. So it's not gonna get all goopy, yucky looking on the outside, non-stick on the inside, it has a 10 year warranty on it. So it's gonna last you for a good long time. This is the five quart saute pan, which is a really nice kind of one pot meal. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get it heating up. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to it. And this is the um, olive, this is an oil and vinegar dispenser. And what's cool is it has little measure markings up here. I don't know if you can see that well enough in the camera, but when you squeeze these little things here, it pulls up your olive oil from the bottom into the top and you can measure, like if you need a tablespoon of oil, it'll measure it out for you. And then you can just pour that into your pan. So super, super fun and easy to do that. And you can do any kind of oil or any kind of vinegar in here. So we're going to let that heat up while we slice up our, sorry, if, I hope I'm not moving the camera too fast that you guys are like, ah, I'm seasick. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and slice up some onion uh, that we're going to caramelize with the rapid prep mandolin. I don't know if you guys have seen this tool before or not, but this is fairly new from Pampered Chef. and um, let me pull that out there just so you can see. So if you can see from there, instead of running your hand with the food across the blade, there is a handle here on top that you pump and that's what makes the blade move back and forth across the food. And put that right there, whoops, throw that back in there. And then for the different settings between these two dials, you have 24 different settings. So this top dial, you can adjust from slice, to what I call a fat julienne, which is like a French fry cut, to a skinny julienne, which is like a matchstick style cut. And then with each of those settings, this bottom dial can be adjusted from one to eight. So one would be like super duper thin. Um, like if you wanted to, you know, kind of shave like Brussels sprouts for a salad or shave potatoes to do like homemade front, uh, potato chips or something, all the way to an eight, which would be about a quarter of an inch thick setting. So you have all that. So the three different main settings and then the thicknesses. And so we're going to slice this onion. We're going to go ahead and slice. I have it set on about a four, kind of a middle of the road cut. And it does have, even though your fingers are not near the blade, as you're starting to push the food in though, it does have a food guard that's going to allow you to let me kind of turn this. Whoops. I just lost my light. So now I'm going to be in the dark. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you guys can see from try to get this at a good angle for you. So you just pump the handle. And there is all of your sliced onions. And you can see how they just all sliced 
the same thickness and it was super duper easy. Um, I love to use this for everything from, thank you, my, hun, my husband came up and brought, brought my light back for me. <laughs> Let me turn this again so you can just see how quick and easy this works. And sometimes I get going really fast like I am right now and food starts flying. That's when my dogs get really happy because then that food might fall on the floor for them. Okay. So that was one onion, super fast. And look at how beautifully sliced everything is and all the same. So this is going to go into our pan. Um, we already had that oil heating. Thanks, dear. And I want to talk a little bit while I got the, the onions cooking, talk a little bit more about this rapid prep mandolin. So this will slice anything from like a super soft tomato. You can slice, like if you wanted to slice for, you know, hamburgers or, you know, something, some really nice slices all the way, something that soft, all the way to like sweet potatoes. And if you guys have ever tried to do sweet potatoes on a mandolin, or even, you know, with cutting with a knife, they're so hard and they're very, very difficult to do. A lot of wedgers and mandolins and things won't handle a sweet potato, but this one will. So sweet potato fries, uh, regular French fries, all that does a beautiful job with this, as well as any of your slicing. And then again, when I get into doing like more like salads or Asian foods or things, like that where I want like um like a matchstick style carrot or something like that you can do that easily with this so really it has a wide range of different things that you can do with it has anybody gotten their hands on this yet I don't know um some of you got might have been to parties in the last year what are some things that you like to make with it zoom's new to me okay, that's okay <laughs> we can hear you now good <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, we like doing French fries and stuff. So it's, you know, you got kids. So yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, if you have an air fryer, <laughs> no, you guys have an air fryer, but if you have like an air fryer and you're making your own French fries, this is a must because you could, I mean, literally you could probably do five potatoes in a minute. It is just like so stinking fast how you can. And it's so new to me. I forget. We, I was like watching you do the onions. I went, I could be doing my onions in that. Yeah. You so. can do really literally anything like carrots. Like I don't buy baby carrots anymore. I run them through the French fry setting because it's just a oh. really nice, you know, mm -hmm. I take a, as big a carrot as I can buy and I run it on the French fry setting. And then that's my little, you know, dip into, uh, you know, for dips or whatever. So yeah, yeah, I really just get creative. Like, you know, again, you can slice <laughs> cucumbers and zucchini and what have you. I mean, really, you know, that that's it. I always recommend when you get a new tool from Pampered Chef, keep it on the counter or put it in the front of your cabinet so that you remember it. You don't, you know, because otherwise you, you're, we're such creatures of habit. You forget right. to try it out. What can I do with it? So mm -hmm. it's really nice if you can, you know, again, put it out, kind of challenge yourself. Like what can I make with it today? So, okay. So that is the rapid prep mandolin. Then next, we're going to do some cherry tomatoes, and I have a brand new tool to share with you. Now, we could run the cherry tomatoes um, through the manual food process, I mean, through the rapid prep mandolin, but this guy is brand new, and it is so much fun. This is it's called a cup slicer. I don't know if you guys can see, but these are blades on the bottom, so it does a lot of what a, um, like a egg slicer would do, except because it's blades, it's a little bit more durable than your know, uh, egg slicer, which would be wires. So you can, of course, slice hard boiled eggs with it, but you can do tomatoes like we're going to do today. You can do strawberries, you can do um, kiwi. So something you can't do really hard, like you can't do carrots, you can't do radishes, go back to your, your uh, rapid prep mandolin, but anything soft. And basically what you do is you just, I'm going to try not to squirt myself. You just cut with it on your cutting board. Oops, that squirted me. And as it cuts, it fills the cup. So I don't know if you guys can see, I'm trying to get the camera at, at a good angle. And now these are a little squishy, so I'm kind of going slow with it, but if it's strawberries, you literally can just chop, chop, chop. But as you slice, you can see how, again, trying to control the, the squirt, it fills the cup for you. And then, oh, this is like way squirty. I haven't done a lot of cherry tomatoes with it. And then when you get to that last bit, because that last little bit doesn't quite go through, use the base and then that kind of pushes it through. And then look at that. You have, look at how beautifully sliced those, those tomatoes are. So super duper fun. I've been having a ton of fun with this, with doing, um, as I said, I'm trying not to squirt myself here, uh, doing strawberries with it. You can do bananas with it. Um, so I really, really love it for that. 
Uh, you could slice olives with it. Um, and again, I'm kind of going slow only because these are so squirty. If it was a, anything else, I would be cutting pretty darn fast. But oops, that one's running away from me. But again, you can see how it fills the cup and then you just dump that out. But as it cuts, each one kind of smushes the next one into the cup. And if you have kids or grandkids that like to help you in the kitchen, this is totally fun. Like kids could easily slice their own fruit, add to their smoothies, put into a fruit bowl, whatever they want to do. But there is, that's like a whole pint of tomatoes all sliced. Beautiful. How quick and easy was that? So that's called the cup slicer if you guys are looking for that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera back around to my stove because that's where we're cooking now. And I've got the onion sauteing a little bit here. Is that a stir? And I'll pull the camera over in just a minute so you can see what it's looking like. But we want to get these cooked down just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and add our cherry tomatoes. And we're going to let these cook down. So basically, this pizza is really very, very simple in that it has um, the tomatoes are going to kind of become our sauce. And then we have the onions, cheese. We have that Italian seasoning that we had um, in the dough. Now, of course, if you wanted to add other things to this, you certainly can. Uh, this is my first time making it, so I'm going to follow the recipe and see how it goes. But um, already I know my husband's thinking like, oh, we could add this and this and this to it. So, um, so we may be doing that the next time we make it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic. If you guys um, have not seen our garlic press, this is a must have in your kitchen. Uh, take your clove of garlic paper and all. You don't need to peel it. Put it into the little hopper there, and then you're going to give it a squeeze. And hopefully you can see that from the camera angle. You get all that, look at that, all that great garlic that came out of there. That's gonna go into our pan. This does come with this little cleaning tool that um, houses right here in the handle. And then as you're using it, I kind of use it to scrape off the garlic as you saw. And then if the skin sticks in here, like this has, I kind of use that to dig out the skin to get that out of there. And then if any garlic does stick into the holes, you've got the other end of the garlic cleaner to clean that out. So super easy to use. Fresh garlic is best. If you guys haven't ventured into using fresh garlic, I highly recommend that you do because there is just nothing better. If you're doing garlic powder, or even the jarred minced garlic that you can buy, because I know that's like easy. Um, to me, it has all kinds of other flavors in there. It is not just pure garlic, and it just does not taste nearly as good as, um, as the real thing. Okay, let me pull the camera over just so you can see what we're looking like here. Doesn't that look good? There we go. And to this, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper using Pamper Chef grinder here. And what I really like about this grinder set, if you're familiar with these, is most grinders have um, kind of like a wire that comes up the top because that's where it grinds. And then it makes it hard to fill this. But if you notice, there is no center tube. So it makes it really easy to fill these. Just put your cap on top. And then all the grinding mechanism is here in the bottom. And we're going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar to this. Going to add a really nice zing to our flavors. Uh, I wish you guys could smell it because it smells so good. Mm. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner off at this point. I'll let that just kind of set for a minute while I finish everything else up. Any questions at this point of anything that I've shown you? Okay, next we're going to grate cheese. So do you guys grate your own cheese or do you guys buy it already pre-grated? Please tell me you don't buy it pre-grated. Nope, okay, good. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> so anyway, somebody has been teaching you well. So we're gonna go ahead and grate cheese. Pampered Chef has a, a couple of different graters, but my preference is this guy. This is the coarse grater um, with this little tab here. You can pull that down. You can open this up and like I could just grate right onto my pizza. Um, I like to use it kind of like a stand. So I'm going to use it this way. Um, and then for storage, it folds flat. 
anything that has a sharp blade from Pampered Chef is going to have a protective cover. So when you're rummaging through your drawers, you can easily um, not cut yourself, which is a good thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this down so that you can see what I'm doing here. Let me get the camera in the right place. And we have another brand new fun little tool that I want to share with you guys is this little guy. It's called a, it's a bag clip. I've gosh, I should know the name and I don't Black bag clip something or another. And what it is, is there's a clip. So like you can use it like as a store, you know, like if chip bags, once they're open, you roll down the top and you can clip on there. But inside this other piece, there's a tiny little blade in there that you can use to cut open the chip bag, or I'm going to use it to cut open the cheese, or you can use it to cut open like a cereal bag or anything like that. So instead of pulling out scissors, you can use this little guy and it has a magnet on it. So like I keep this right on my refrigerator. So it's easy for me to grab. I don't really use it as the clippy part of it because I want to use the cutter part of it, but, um, but it does have both features on it. So let me just show you how this is going to work. So whatever you need to cut open, you just put that on there. You give it a little squeeze. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing and just slide. And there it is. It just opened up that package really quick and easy. So love that you get two in a set. So you really could put one on a bag of chips or whatever, and then you could have one on your refrigerator. Whoops, I just cut myself. And it's a good thing you're not gonna eat this pizza because now I'm bleeding. <laughs> I was not paying attention. So, which brings me to this guy, which is what I should have been using. <laughs> this is the uh, cover to this. And what you do is you put your cheese on the inside here. And then when you're grating, you're not going to cut yourself. And I'm not going to grate cheese right now because my finger is bleeding and I don't want to bleed all over my pizza. So I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> so take my word for it about how this works. It's super sharp. And that's how sharp it is, is that it just cut me. Um, so I should be using the, the grater. And then, like I said, this does protect your finger. So with that said, I need my husband to go get me a Band-Aid. <laughs> It is a good thing he is nearby. Usually I do these when he's not here and I'm like, I really need you tonight. So with that said, let me, um, give me just a second here. We're going to get the pizza out. So what we're going to do now at this point is in a clear room here. I might have to have my husband come finish this pizza for you guys. <laughs> Nothing like live TV, right? Okay. We are going to go ahead and we are going to build our pizza. First, I'm going to roll out my dough on to um, my, this um, pastry mat here, but then I'm going to build the pizza on our pizza peel. Does anybody have a pizza peel? Nope. Okay. These are super fun. So if you guys go out to pizza restaurants where they, um, you know, they have like the brick ovens where they make the pizza and then they kind of shoosh the pizza into the oven. That's exactly what you can do at home. So I've got my stoneware in the oven preheating. I'm going to go ahead and make my pizza on here. Then I can, you know, kind of throw it onto that stone that's super hot and it's going to get that crust really, really nice and hot. So that's why I really love to use a pizza peel when I'm making pizza at home. But you can also use this as a charcuterie board. I do this all the time where I make a charcuterie board with it. And it's just a fun little presentation. So you can put all your meats and cheeses and then has a nice little carrying handle so that you can you know, get that to the table. Okay, bear with me while I put a Band-Aid on my finger. Okay, the doctor is not in the house. <laughs> Man, it got all messed up. <laughs> so I hope he brought two down. I think he did. He's always prepared. <laughs> Bear with me. Sorry, you guys. Hi, Drew. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, I right? I know. I'm doing it. <laughs> Are you pump, pump on my leg? I'm not pulling your leg. Are you carrying your what? Okay. <laughs> You're cracking me up. Are you pump my leg? No. You crack me up. Okay, guys, here we go. So I have our dough is ready. Is that not beautiful? And we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of flour on our board as I roll this out. 
And I could probably go right onto my pizza peel, but I do better to roll it out and then to transfer it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put a little bit of flour on it so that my rolling pin doesn't stick to it. Isn't this a pretty Band-Aid? <laughs> So if you don't have do you, does Pampered Chef have its own rolling pin? Yes. So this is our newest one. We have a couple of different ones. This one is all wood and it has measure markings on the end. So like if you need like, um, can you see that? So yeah. like if you need to roll out your dough to like a quarter of an inch, you know, you can, you know, see your measurements okay. on your cutting board. Um, we also have a marble rolling pin, which I don't have handy. Um, but we do have that, which is beautiful. And then we have this other rolling pin is one that we've had kind of for a while where it has the two different ends. This end is beveled. So it makes it really nice to roll. Like if you've made pie and you need to roll it up the sides of the pie pan, this side is good. This side is flat. So you could be doing like what I'm doing here, rolling, rolling your pizza out here. Okay. So a couple of different ones, kind of just your preference, but um, I kind of like this one. This is brand new to me. Um, I've just been using it for, I say brand new, about a year that we've had it out, but um, so just kind of getting used to, to using it, but it really does work well. And it just kind of, I don't know, it just feels good in my hands, I guess, as, as I'm rolling it out. Okay. And this is not very round because I don't want to take time to make it like all perfect for you guys, but you're getting the idea of what it is. And I'm going to make it a little bit more. This is going to be a very rustic pizza, right? When it when it's not perfectly round, you can say it's rustic and then people are like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I meant for it to be like that. That's how okay. I <laughs> So here we go. Spread that out just a little bit more. And then the trip I have learned is when you're using your pizza peel, you want to make sure that your dough is going to slide off of here into the oven because if it sticks, it's a big old mess. Trust me, I know that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to sprinkle cornmeal on here. So this is the flour sugar shaker um, that we're going to go ahead and use. And it gives it a really nice fine um, layer of that cornmeal. And I find you have to be pretty heavy handed because we want to make sure that that dough is going to slide right off. So we've got that totally covered, as you can see. We're going to take our dough and put it on here. And I find if it moves around, you're good. If it sticks somewhere, you're in trouble. And then you're going to put cheese on there, but I don't have cheese. We're going to just kind of go through the motions here. <laughs> and I'm going to put cheese on top at the end, but I just kind of want to show you what this is going to look like. So you're going to have your cheese. You're going to have your caramelized onions and tomatoes that are going to go on here. And then that's gonna go into the oven. So I'm gonna get it that far and then finish up with you guys with what is on sale. But, oh, this is gonna be so good. Kind of more like a, it's almost like a tart, I guess, or a flatbread. It might even be another way to kind of look at this. But there we go. And then I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see me as I shush it into the oven, hopefully with no problem whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> this is always the challenge. So I'm going to do it later. My husband's like, cheese, don't forget the cheese. I'm like, yeah, I want to get this in the oven. <laughs> I want you guys to see me uh, put this in the oven. So we'll come back to that. <laughs> okay. So can you guys see? So I've got the stone in the oven down there. I have my pizza on here. We're just going to kind of give it a little switch like that. And because of all that cornmeal on there, you can see how that slid right in there so beautifully. And we're going to go ahead and set our timer and let that bake. Okay, so ta-da! Through my cut finger and all, we got the pizza made. <laughs> so that is... Um, the, the demo, and I just wanted to show you guys a couple of tools, especially that stand mixer being new. So do you guys have any questions on, like I said, anything that I've shown you tonight, or again, anything that you're curious about with Pampered Chef, because I can certainly pull anything out of my cabinet.
Nope. Okay. Then let me take just a minute to go through specials with you guys. Um, and if you have any questions as we go along with this, certainly let me know. So um, if you guys uh, see some things that you'd like to order, whether it's things I've talked about tonight or things that you're seeing on the table platform as you're scrolling through that information, there is a button that says shop. So when you click that, that will connect you to your host so that she gets credit for your order. With a $90 order, you get a free gift. So you get your choice of the saute tongs. Uh, what's really nice about these is for storage, they're really nice, thin, fine. Uh, when you get ready to use them, you just turn them around like you just saw, and now they're springy. And these are really nice for like delicate, like um, shrimp or scallops or something when you need, you know, kind of something small that you need to kind of get a hold of to turn. So these are the saute tongs. Or you get your choice of the pasta tongs. So these are nice in that when you turn them down and give them a squeeze, they open. When you turn them up and squeeze, they lock. And that's just like all of our tongs. If you have our chef's tongs, they work the same way. But you can see how with these, they have the little grippers for pasta. So they're super easy to use for that. Yeah. And then, um, or you can get our everything but the pizza seasoning. So this tastes like pizza. So like literally one of my favorite things to do with this is I take like sliced zucchini and I sprinkle it with some of the everything pizza seasoning and then put some either mozzarella cheese or Parmesan cheese on top. And it tastes like pizza because it's got this pizza seasoning on it. So anything that you kind of want to ramp up your pizza flavor with, you can go ahead and add the anything pizza seasoning to it. So with a $90 order, you get to choose one of those for free. And with a $150 order, you'll go ahead and get free shipping. Now, if some of you live close to each other and you want to put your order together so that you can hit that 150, you just have to figure out who I recommend who has the cheaper tax rate, ship it there so that you pay the lower tax rate. Um, and then if you guys have, you know, together over $150, you don't need to pay shipping, but you will have to fight over the gift. So I recommend that you go for the seasoning at that point, because you can split the bottle between the two of you. <laughs> so, so there's my little trick for you on that. Um, if you guys are finding that your list is getting really long, there's a lot of things that you're wanting from Pampered Chef. Think about having a party, um, just like your host is doing this week. Uh, we can party on table, as you're seeing. It just makes it really easy and convenient for people to join and pick up some recipes and demos and whatever. And um, it's all totally at your convenience. Um, if you are interested in the stand mixer, so if you don't have one yet and that's been on your wish list, the only way to get the stand mixer is as a host but we do give it to you on sale and it is reduced hugely this month. Um, if you're interested, uh, you can get it at 60% off, which brings the price of that stand mixer down to $159. And I know I have not seen any other stand mixers on the market for $159. So you're getting like the Mercedes deluxe version of stand mixers for a really, really good price. Um, but if you host a party this month and you don't want a stand mixer, like you already have one, you can choose anything in the catalog at 60 60% off. So if you're looking at one of our other electrics, or maybe you want a piece of stoneware or whatever you might want, you can choose at 60% off with a by hosting a party this month. If this month isn't good for you, next month is cookware. So if you're interested in getting uh, some new pieces or new sets of cookware, I can help you with a 60% discount as a host in April for cookware. So, so that's what we have going on. Um, so any other questions for you guys? No? No. Well, thank you guys so very much for joining me. It's always nice to meet you because I know, you know, some of you I've now seen now in several parties and I feel like I know you because I've seen your names a couple of times, but it's really nice to like actually see you and uh, get to know you and um, really nice to meet you guys. And I appreciate you guys taking time joining me tonight. Thank you. You got it. So as you guys are shopping or have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me this week. Okay. okay. Thank you. you got it. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 <laughs>